good evening, everyone. Today is January 10th, 2024. This is a meeting of the uh, Westport, Massachusetts Personnel Board. Uh, it, the time is 7.02 p.m. This meeting is being held remotely in accordance with the governor of Massachusetts, March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general laws, section 30A, uh, chapter 30A, section 20. On March 29th, 2023, Governor Healy signed the supplemental 2023 budget bill allowing remote and hybrid meeting options for public bodies through March 31, 2025. This meeting is being recorded. I'd like to um, get started. Um, I do not have the agenda in front of me, but we only have uh, three items on the, four items on the agenda. The first being we are pleased to have uh, the newly sworn in um, Chief of Police, uh, Chief uh, Christopher Dunn is with us uh, this evening. And he wanted to present to us, uh, I'll just give you a little bit of background. Um, <clears throat> on the same date that our former uh, police chief retired, so did the deputy chief. So right now the current chief, uh, Chief Dunn is without a deputy, which he certainly, uh, any community would need to have a second in command uh, for obvious reasons. So uh, there were some necessary changes that needed to be made to the job description. Uh, and Chief Dunn wanted to get that taken care of as soon as possible so we can get this job posted um, and he can um, start the process of hiring a, um, uh, of appointing a, a, a deputy. The change of the description of the job description was approved by the select board uh, Monday, uh, January 8th, just uh, two days ago. Uh, and so now it has uh, come before us uh, as has happened in the past, uh, our um, our approval is, I guess, tentative until town meeting makes it official. Uh, but I'm not really sure that it pertains to job descriptions. I mean, I think we have sole authority, and I would have to check on that as far as changing the job description. The job description will be approved, though, by the, the um, voting members at the next annual town meeting uh, in May of 2024. Uh, but I do not foresee that that would create any um, uh, any problems. So I'm going to turn this over to uh, Chief Dunn um, and let him explain, since he was the uh, author of many of the changes, working with the town administrator to uh, to make some of these changes. I'll let him go uh, go through that. So, Chief Dunn, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate you having me, and thank you to the board for um, having me on for tonight's agenda. Um, I hope everybody had a nice holiday and happy new year. Um, with that being said, um, I am looking to post eventually for the deputy chief's position. Um, while doing so, I did some research about the current job description and it appeared it was slightly outdated. So I in turn contacted, <clears throat> excuse me, legal counsel for the mass chiefs of police who provided with me with several different versions of the deputy chief's positions in different municipalities. So I kind of edited it and created it into something of our own. Um, the big changes that I see is regarding, uh, it's called POST. It's Peace Officers and Standards uh, Training. Um, it's something that now officers need to be certified in within the Commonwealth. Um, that was not one of the requirements. And I'm sorry, I just need to get to, I'm learning how to do sp split screens. Yeah. Um, so basically it, the, the big thing was POST as well as um, updating the current qualifications and requirements um, for a deputy chief's position. So like Madam Chair said, it went in front of the Board of Selectmen, it was approved. I'm here this evening um, for the board to review and hopefully uh, vote and approve on this this evening. Okay, so I did send around um, your version, um, your version, uh, the updated or the approved um, one that was sent out to the select board and the one that was approved i did send it around to uh the board members so if they have any questions feel free to ask away um uh, i don't have any particular questions i mean I, I think all of the things that were uh added were certainly um important and necessary to um to maintain the qualifications and to main maintain the certification of uh of our police force so i think they, they've all been very good um, and and hopefully you'll be able to find 
the right candidate within within your ranks or or um, outside. Now, t tell us about the posting requirement. Uh, the posting requirement would be for um, for it to be posted within the police department um, in an area that everybody has access to. I would send it out to uh, eligible applicants that have attained at least the rank of sergeant. Um, it would be posted for seven days, and after which it would come down. I would review um, how many applicants we have and then proceed forward from there. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm um, Cindy. This is uh, Gary here. Yeah. Uh, I reviewed the um, the uh, job descriptions. I'm happy the chief went through and did a, a, a scrub of the old job descriptions. I think a lot of times when we <clears throat> get um, departments in in front of the board, we we look at them and say okay how you know how old are these job descriptions because a lot of times these job descriptions have been around for decades and that's kind of that's kind of what we struggle with so i'm happy the chief took it upon himself to, to go ahead and, and review these and and make changes and and who would know best than than him to make the, the proper changes according to what uh, he sees fit for the department so i have no questions with uh the um job description as presented okay uh carrie how about you uh, do you have any uh, any questions for chief dunn um, I do actually. Okay. Go I, ahead. The first page at the bottom under job environment, mm -hmm. the very last sentence, um, negotiating skills to influence the decisions and behavior of other parties. Can that be removed? Cause to me, it just sounds like a nice way of saying manipulation. I have to pull that up here too. That's on the first page. Yes, right, right. under a job environment. It's the very last sentence. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I have it printed out, so it may not be a first. Well, no, it should be a first page for you as well. All right. Or can we just a nicer way to say it? I mean, let me just let me just get get to that part. My screen had frozen up. I too am dealing with split screens here, so um, sometimes it has a mind of its own. Oh, yeah, see, mine doesn't come in pages; it's one long thing. So it's under you... job environment. Okay, job, and environment. it's the second to the last paragraph, the last sentence. Could we say something like? to get all parties, mm -hmm. you know, on the same page or to agree or. Okay, so I, I guess, uh, Chief, I, I mean, I see, I, I see her point. Um, you know, what, what is the, what is the purpose of that when it says negotiating blah, 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 discretion and negotiating skills to influence the decisions and behavior of other parties? Reading it now, I can see where um, board number you know, would, would, I can see what she's saying, and I have no problem with um, us omitting that from the job description. Excellent. Or yeah. or just, you know, changing well, I, the wording guess, a little bit. I, you know, I guess that the, you know, discretion part, the resourcefulness um, is certainly, would certainly apply. I mean, you know, you would want to have, have someone with discretion and someone who does have resources and, and the ability to tap into resources as well as negotiating skills. I mean, quite often you oh, are, dealing, yeah. you know, you are dealing with um, individuals that, uh, you know, need to be addressed in a certain way. Um, it, it's the influence, the decisions, right? That you probably have more behavior, that you probably have more problem with. Is that right, Carrie? It is. And I understand that you do have to influence certain parties to get them to do what you want them right. to do. So is it the behavior word that, that you probably have the most issue with? I think it's the influence, the word okay. influence. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So how about uh, we can leave the, the sentence in there, uh, resourcefulness, discretion, and negotiating skills, um, um, period. How about period? Yeah. Contacts require considerable persuasiveness, resourcefulness, discretion, and negotiating skills, period. Are you okay with that? Yeah, because in the very next, the, the last actual sentence, it says bargaining and negotiating again. And I think that covers it. 
Yeah. Okay. So how about if we just st stop after the word skills? Perfect. Okay. I will make that note in, um, alert the select board. I'm sure they're not going to have any, um, issue with that. And uh, I don't think that will affect your posting one way or the other. I don't think it's a significant change that changes the, uh, tenor of, of this. If for whatever reason, if the town administrator feels that this requires another vote of the board, which I, I'm quite confident it would not, uh, I will come back and we'll see if we can, um, work this out between the select board ourselves and the chief. So, um, okay. So right after the word skills, we're going to put a period. Um, okay. Uh, Carrie, do you have any other uh, comments? I have two more things. Um, okay. There's an error on under essential functions. At least there's an error when it's printed out. It's the third paragraph. And right after chief, it says modifications required. I've had that same issue. I, I was trying several times to to correct that. And for whatever reason, it, it would not. I believe when I printed it, it, it that error did not come up. Um, it, it did for my it, it printer. Did. Okay. Um, um, can I ask what you used to, was it Microsoft Word or? Yes, it's, it's Microsoft Word doc. Okay. Several ways of editing it and, and yeah. If you can't figure it, I don't even know if I can do this. If he can't figure it out, I could, if he saw, send me the original, I could probably. So what, um, so tell me what the problem is here. So I had read this responsible for implementing approved plans and policies, assesses their effectiveness and recommends to the chief modifications as required, oh, modifications required. So what's the issue? The text changes. Oh, and oh. yeah, it's just an error. It, yeah, it's yeah. just an error in a type of like, a, a, I don't know. All right. But if he okay. highlights it and then he could probably change it back to whatever text, yeah. Or, yeah. whatever yeah. font. Uh, this is. Yeah. It's just a formatting yeah. issue. Okay. Okay. All right. And the last thing is what he um, talked about earlier, post. I watched two of the meetings and I was impressed. And one of the meetings they had, a, they discussed that they don't really have a way of keeping track of the certifications as of yet, but they're figuring it out. Um, who, who, is, who is they? The, the Massachusetts Post. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and that's a big concern for me um, when it comes to the police, just not so much the standards, but the training. Um, how do you feel about I don't even know how this does training come out of it comes out of the police budget, correct? Yes, like training. Do you have any? training for more humanistic, more like sensitive? Is that something that you're already doing? Yeah, so we do that through the Massachusetts Criminal Justice Training Council. Where, oh, okay. Um, we receive annual training 40 hours a year um, in its various topics. Some are criminal law updates, some are regarding um, dealing with people with mental health issues. Um, so there's topics that they talk about every year that's different. Okay, um, so it does get covered. Yes. That was it. I just love that. I loved to post the the whole idea of it. And I wanted to just make note of that. And other than that, I have no problems with this. Good. Okay. Uh, well, I will make sure that we make note of that one um, wording change. And um, we'll uh, see if we can get the other thing cleaned up anyway. Um, yeah, it's a font. It's a, I okay. think a font issue. Okay. Uh, see, it, it does. It looks fine on my screen, so that's why I, I kept wondering what the problem was. Because on my screen, although it's relatively small, um, because I have a split screen on a on a small iPad here, so I didn't really see the change in in the font. So that's why I I kept questioning why why it was an issue. Now I understand. Um, okay, so does anyone have any other questions that they have for uh, Chief Dunn? Uh, I'll make a motion that we we uh, approve the uh, job description. 
um, with the changes. With okay. the I'll, I'll second. <clears throat> okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the uh, job description as submitted with the noted change that was uh, changes that we had discussed. Uh, any other discussion? No. Uh, all those in favor have to take a roll call. Uh, Gary. Yes. Uh, Carrie. Carrie, yes. Uh, Cindy Brown, aye. Okay, so unanimous uh, decision. Thank you very much, Chief, and hopefully you can get this posted tomorrow uh, and you can be on your way to getting a uh, full staff. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. It's nice to meet you. Okay. Else. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Good night. Thank you so much. <clears throat> okay, so the uh, next item we have uh, up is a change in the uh, job description for um, the uh, director of IT. Uh, I believe I did send around a second email that noted what the what the primary changes were to that job description, and I'm going to try to get that in front of me. But in the meantime. Feel free, um, Carrie, I know you probably had some questions about this. I'm going to let you start and see, um, tell me what uh, what your thoughts are on, um, on this. Okay. Um, I think it's very vague. I think someone coming into this type of position would want to know what type of systems, what operating what the operating systems are what the language programming languages and i tried to reach out to keith to get some more information and we're playing tag so yeah. I, so i haven't gotten it yet but it, be, it would be nice if we could um put it in well i don't know if the job description necessarily would dictate what the systems are i mean it that the candidate would current candidate would be uh, because whatever systems we have in place would not necessarily be permanent. We right, could change. We could, change. could we could change operating systems next week. So then that could eliminate someone who's currently in the position. So I, I think that they've left it vague for a specific reason, because it's not so much that um, the job description dictates what the operating system is, the person, you know, in interviewing the candidate for the position, whoever is the, the oversight manager or, or the, uh, the reporting manager for that position would have to qualify whether or not that candidate would be, yeah. would be suitable for that operating system. I mean, I yeah. think nailing it down too much, I think, cripples the cripples the, the the job description gary go during, ahead during, during the interview process i think that those are the questions that would probably be asked uh what what from what are you familiar i mean hopefully they're familiar with microsoft i mean you know that's that's the basic but whatever systems the town uses i mean we i mean and now they're looking at doing different systems they're looking at a system for payroll for the schools they're looking at a system for this so i think locking it into a job description might be a, we might just be limiting ourselves to the pool of candidates um I, I don't know i i understand but even like there's a foundation that's really not going to change the yeah. actual operating system we can add software to that we can add microsoft to that but the code and the programming language doesn't really change yeah i i wouldn't know anything about that i mean obviously i'm not i don't I, i'm not involved in it but um, I, I would if we if Keith so you, you hadn't you hadn't gotten he wasn't he, available. We're going back and forth. He had I oh. had asked him a question. He came back with do you, what specific and I answered and I'm waiting for him to answer me again. Right. So I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I guess once again, I'll just come back to like the limiting factor that if if for whatever reason we change operating systems, which I know is not something that is likely. Um, I, I wouldn't want someone to say, well, look, it says here in my job description, I only had to do be familiar with this. And now you're saying I have to be familiar with something else. Uh, and it was stated in my job description that it was X, Y, Z. And you're telling me now it's going to be ABC. Um, I want to renegotiate my contract. I mean, I, I, yeah, I, 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 I don't, don't, yeah, don't want to, even... I don't want to nail it down so much that gives, that really cripples or handcuffs 
the town side from being able to be somewhat flexible. Right. I mean, I think that you have to give some, as Gary said, some uh, responsibility to the person who's who's interviewing the candidate. In this case, this is not a this is not a new job that we're posting. The current person that's in the job, and if that person ever left, we would certainly have the opportunity to uh, to revisit what the job description is. The the supervisor certainly would have to feel that that candidate is qualified to operate, to, to use, and to support the systems that we have. I don't even know if there is a base. I mean, I'm just thinking about this now. Is there really a base for IT? Because, uh, you know, you could we could be on a SaaS system. They could be on, um, you know, they could be on all these different platforms that support all the different software that the, system, that the towns use. Um, you know, I think we're getting into the 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 uh, the ability of someone to do the job instead of just a job description at that point you know right. that's only my opinion i mean I, right I, I i tend to agree i mean i think that you have to leave some room for for the person who's hiring or who supervises that candidate to um, to determine whether or not that person is capable of of doing that um, but i i would i would tend to uh, agree, but um, I, I yeah, I didn't consider the uh, renegotiating and what you had mentioned. Yeah, <laughs> I just wouldn't want us to change something and then it's like, oh well, now we're going to change the yeah. job description. The person, this one has kind of been worked out. Um, uh, I have the 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 changes here. Um, the primary changes here: the director of IT is responsible for researching and implementing technological solutions to support townwide operations, supervises department staff, and ensures secure and effective data management and develops cost-effective opportunities to leverage department town assets. So that was an additional clause that was added to uh, the description. Uh, administer a comprehensive information technology program for the town of Westport. To me, that is a little bit vague, but you know, once again, technology changes so much that it, it really doesn't come into necessarily a job description. If you worked at a tech firm, that would definitely be, you know, a qualification. But um, I think we have to we have to be so flexible and um, to to fly with whatever program, either antiquated or not, that we may still be right. trying to support. Um, what about? I just thought of this um, where it says qualifications what if we added something like experience with blah blah and blah beneficial not preferred but but yeah, i wouldn't I, even I, know where to I, begin yeah i don't i wouldn't even know what programs to offer i mean, I mean we could he, we could go back 10 to 15 20 years ago look at an old job description it probably said dos one two three so no right i mean right um <laughs> what, what, do we put it, what do we put in what do we put in <laughs> what do we put in now, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess I would feel differently if we were advertising for a new position, a new a new person entirely. Uh, I think that these were just some uh, suggested um, uh, updates to his current job description that um, either or both parties felt were, were um, essential uh, to continue. And we will always have the opportunity, should this position become vacant, to say, hey, you know what? We need to refresh this, this, this job description to make sure whoever is coming in, we capture a lot of these things. So I, I would definitely feel differently, Carrie, if, we were, if this was going to be a new position that uh, we did not have anyone for. But this is really just kind of tweaking the, the job description of someone who's already there. I don't really even think there maybe is even is a. I mean, I, I don't know. Like I said, I know nothing about IT, but uh, I don't even know if there really is a standard. You know, unlike, for instance, the police chiefs. You know, um, they, there are standards uh, that that they have to they have to adhere to. Mass Massachusetts criminal justice. Uh, so this is, might be a little bit different. You know, this is this is forever changing. It well, it's not a standard. It's qualification. Um, so, the language which runs it all. And I know yeah. that like students that oh, graduate right. yeah. from Vogue, say, just as an example, with the IT, they come out with certain certifications for certain languages and whatnot. 
Right. So I, I figured if there was some way they could at least know kind of what they were getting into, maybe we could, they would, we would get more applicants. Cause I know we have trouble with applicants. And that, and that would definitely be true if this were a position we were posting yeah. for a new candidate. Yeah. I, I would, don't even know I what would, software they use. I would totally agree, Carrie, that if we were looking for someone new and we would have that opportunity if for whatever reason Keith left, uh, I don't know, perhaps Keith has several certifications. I don't know. We're, you know, we're not his supervisor. No, That's right. not part of our, our, our realm necessarily. Um, but um, I, I would I would feel much more strongly in your camp if we were looking for a new candidate. I think we would have I to understand. nail. I understand. I, yeah, I think we would have to nail any, down. Yeah, if this is any assurance, I mean, I'm the chief financial officer in Do in Dartmouth, and for instance, just last year we changed operating systems, and we also not only changed operating systems, we implemented like six new software systems in in the town. So, you know. I, I don't know how that would play into a job description if we ever had to do a right. job description for the IT person. You know, it's not, we really can't lock it in because it, it's change, it, it's it's always changing. You know, and they're talking about maybe changing the operating system again next year. So it's. Or but is it the operating system or just like permitting software you're changing? No, no, no. Those no. are different. You know what right. I mean? We, There's different we changed, levels. We changed, we changed operating systems that, that house like our Muna software, our, um, uh, because they had to be on a different platform. It's all web-based now. Yes. Where before, oh, okay. where before it was, um, it was all local. So now it's all cloud-based. So that right. had to change. So you so changed know. hosting. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. All okay. that's changed. Yeah. So that it would yeah. depend upon what the hosting's code was. Yeah. What they. Yeah. Used. I mean, I, I yeah. wouldn't have a clue. Gary, it must be nice to work in a town that has money to spend on those things. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're strapped a little bit too. I mean, it's not you know. <laughs> How many? How many people in your? How many people in the IT department in the town of Dartmouth? We have three. Yeah, uh, we have three quarters. So, <laughs> yeah. um, um, uh, I know that one of the goals in here, uh, and it was covered, I think, under the job description, and I, and I know that this is a an emphasis going forward, is to. Um, uh, perhaps join more uh, creatively uh, with uh, the school department in, in sharing resources. Yeah. Uh, I think that was addressed in the initial uh, one. And although it's not necessarily clear here, uh, it, it certainly has been um, uh, determined that, that that's something that they want to put in a, a lot more emphasis on going forward. It, it was to, pay because right. right now we're paying for two different hosting companies. Correct. Right. Yeah. Right. Now, in in some degree, you know, they're they're a little bit unique, but you know, I think that because we only have three quarters of an IT person, uh, he gets spread kind of thin. And uh, to the extent that that it's possible for them to look at ways to economize and to share uh, platforms and software, I think that that's uh, something we're we're, we're going to have to take a look at. So it's um, it's yeah, really that's a, uh, that's a policy decision too. I mean, they have to make a right. determination. Right, right. Um, so um, that that's kind of the the gist of it. I. I did not ask the uh, town administrator to uh, attend tonight. If um, uh, this this is not a time sensitive issue, if we had more questions and we wanted to talk to the town administrator about this, we certainly uh, can. As I said, the um, with uh, Mr. Novo currently being in the position, and this is just a tweaking of the of the uh, job description. There's really no impact, immediate impact in the workplace uh if we uh table this or not i mean i'm fine with the with the changes i mean we're we're very fortunate uh keith keith puts in far many more hours than what he's paid for uh i think he's right now scheduled for i think 25 to 30 hours a week and uh he puts far in excess of that he's only paid for 25 to 30 hours a week uh, and uh, puts far many more hours in that than uh, than what he's paid for. So we're fortunate that he's willing to uh, provide as much time as he does. Um, and I know that we're very much challenged on the town side 
on technology. We're way behind the eight ball. We've finally gotten upgraded on a few things. Um, you know, we're going to get beach passes now online. I mean, there's going to be a lot more things I think that we're going to be able to um, uh, economize with in uh, using technology to help us. And certainly uh, Keith is going to be very key to some of those and hopefully some sometime down the road, either his hours can be expanded or we can uh, partner with someone else to either provide us, you know, regular part-time service in addition to Keith or partner with the schools and, and get some of their um, support as well. So I think that that's on, on the plate or, or on the minds of, of many of the uh, decision makers in town. Uh, and we'll just have to see, we're going to be forced in, into that uh, that process because we just don't have the resources to be able to do it otherwise. So, um, right. Uh, I'd, be okay with, I'd be okay with tabling this and just see if Kerry can get more information from Keith. Maybe there is a baseline, you know, uh, maybe there is something that he can add to the job description and that way we, at least we know yes or no. You yeah, know, okay. so yeah. I'd be okay with, if it's not That's an immediate fine. rush, I would, I would say, let's wait, let's wait a little bit. Um, I'm fine with that too. Carrie, are you? I am. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll, um, we can table this, um, and uh, we'll have it brought up again because we'll, you know, we'll have reason for a meeting perhaps and again in maybe two, three weeks outside for the next item I want to talk about, which is the uh, classification study. Uh, so I had an initial call with um, the people from uh, GovHR and they are setting up um, uh, some forms that they'll be sending out to the employees to fill out uh, and to have some individual meetings with them uh, and then give us um, some feedback on initially what, um, you know, what, what they're thinking and, and how things are going. So I'll be able to report back a little bit in more detail in the coming weeks. Um, I think they've allowed two to three weeks for the uh, feedback. I think their their final report may be due sometime around the end of April. Uh, so I'll have some intermittent um, uh, updates for uh, for this board uh, in the meantime to let them know how that's. Um, oh, they've already started, the Cindy. Uh, yeah, they we we had the initial meeting, the launch meeting, and uh, they had the whole list of uh, employees, the categories, the current job descriptions. Uh, and they, they are putting together a, um, a form, uh, a questionnaire that they will send to the employees with big, bold letters. You know, this in no way um, has any implications about, you know, whether or not your job is in jeopardy or whether it's needed or any of that. This is purely for information purposes. We don't want people to get concerned that we're trying to economize here or, or streamline um, positions. Um, so they'll send out the questionnaire. Uh, they're going to do sample interviews with uh, with people, um, uh, random in interviews that, of people that are willing to talk about uh, you know, their their positions if there are some questions about them. Uh, but it's pretty you know extensive. Obviously, it does cover police and fire as well, um, which I kind of question because they're covered by a bargaining ag agreement and arbitration. So. Quite, you know, quite a few of the decisions that are made for police and fire um, are out of our hands. We are not doing schools. Uh, number one, that's a very large, uh, you know, very large group of uh, employees. So I, I think that our emphasis will not be as strict on the police and fire side, since that already has some degree of scrutiny when it comes to bargaining. Uh, they so, have uh, this. Yeah, I got a question. Have they given the town a timeline? Like, um, uh, have they issued a timeline of when? Because the next step is now meeting with the department. You're saying? Yeah. So they they uh, over February and March they'll be compiling a lot of the data, and oh, okay. they ex they expect that by the end of April we'll probably have uh, a report if everything goes the way they plan anyway, as far as getting responses back and being able to compiled data for all of the reasons why, you know, we thought that they were a good fit. They have so much comp information already, you know, comparable yeah. information to communities. And they showed us a, a um, they showed uh, the town administrator and I a list of how they scored 
Westport versus other communities as to what would be a good comp community. Uh, and, you know, no surprise, I mean, communities like Somerset, Swansea, um, Seekonk, believe it or not, was very, very close to us as far as population, per capita income, valuation of property. They have a little bit, obviously, more business business class there, but that doesn't really affect the employees as much um, as, you know, Dartmouth comes in um, uh, as well. So there are several communities that were very, very close to us in profile. They had a, they had a whole scoring factor that they used to, um, to score each community based on I think it was like six or seven qualifications. Uh, well, population. Dartmouth, they do a pretty good job. Yeah. Um, so, um, so they they will focus on that primarily. Like Seekonk would not necessarily be a competing uh, community to us as far as us losing positions or or us you know having to compete for employees with Seekonk. But certainly Somerset, Swansea, Dartmouth. Uh, you know, Fairhaven, I mean, those communities, we would far be in far much more uh, competition with them uh, into uh, losing employees or attracting employees. So, um, so those are some of the things that they will be looking at when they look to see how our, um, how our positions rank up. Uh, you know, some of them may be higher, some may be lower. We don't know that yet. So we'll, uh, we'll see. But I, I think at least once and for all, for all the reasons why we wanted to have this report done, we'll know where we stand, um, yeah. and we'll know if we're, you know, at the at the bottom of the mid range, up at the top. Uh, I, you know, I know this thing a lack of steps and lack of ranges is a problem because, uh, as a person from GovHR had indicated, you know, many communities have steps and ranges, and Westport really does not. Um, so we'll 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 have to see how how we stack up with um, with that. That you know, quite often in the past, you know, we've created a new job description to be able to give someone more money because they had they had kind of capped out in that job description because we didn't have ranges, we didn't have any place to go with them to be able to uh, offer them more of uh, you know more of a financial reward for the for work done over a long period of time. So we would create a new job description and kind of elevate them. Well, that's not necessarily always the way to do it, you know, just by creating some more words in a job description. So, I mean, those are some of the things that they'll be looking at. I'm not saying that that's going to be true across the board, but those are some of the things that they'll uh, view to see where people are from a longevity standpoint uh, and how we can address uh, attracting people to come in and give them some incentives to uh, stay with the town and work for, you know, better wages um, given, you know, if they, if they do a good job here. So, um, so we'll see, we'll see. So that process is moving along and hopefully by springtime, we're going to have, um, uh, we'll have some results, uh, but I'll, I will certainly keep you, um, keep you apprised of, uh, of that. Um, the, other item on the uh, agenda as well was um, just talking about the personal bylaws in general. I can't tell you how many people have approached me from various departments in town that say, you know, the, the whole personal bylaw is rather ambiguous. And I agree. There are some things that are just very vague. Carrie, as you had pointed out, uh, you know, that there are just some things in there that don't really nail down enough information to um you know to to qualify what what the 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 true meaning of a of a position might be um we're going to have hopefully gov hr take a look at that as well and you know tell us perhaps some of the areas that that's lacking uh that would be subject to you know a little bit more negotiation with them i think the town administrator was able to uh, you know, cull some positions out because they're not really doing seasonal workers. Um, I think seasonal workers kind of come on a, uh, you know, as, as the market dictates, perfect point, uh, you know, lifeguards. Uh, it's kind of hard to, you know, to set a scale on lifeguards when all of a sudden the next town overcharge, you know, is going to offer $3 more an hour. 
you know, you have to kind of compete with what you can or what resources you have. So uh, I think that there that we've eliminated some seasonal positions, you know, poll workers, uh, minimum wage type positions. So the cost may come down a little bit, which may give us a little bit of room to add on some um, uh, additional scope uh, to uh, to their work. But we'll uh, we'll see. Um, uh, how that goes, you know, town meeting approved a, a fairly wide scope and we're limited really just by the amount of money that we have uh, available. So uh, hopefully we're going to be able to get this done right uh, and done in one uh, and done in one package. Very good. I have confidence in them. Yeah, I think they do a good job. I mean, this is what they do. Yep. Um, and they're certainly familiar with uh, our local area. They've done enough. Uh, enough of these comps in the uh, in the area to be able to uh, recognize where uh, where those needs are. Yeah. Um, I think one last thing on the agenda of the minutes. Um, just had a couple of uh, there were some date changes to the minutes. Um, so, Jess, help me here. I don't have the agenda here in front of me. What what date minutes uh, do you want to have approved? July twelfth, twenty twenty three. Okay. Nine, nine seven, twenty twenty three. And is this because of the roll call? Um, they why, weren't. Why did, yeah. Why were the, those were not approved previously? They weren't approved, but they also updated because of the the roll. The roll. The roll. Okay. Oh yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, so some some committees and boards have been flagged for not listing in their minutes uh, actual roll call votes. So even if a vote is unanimous, uh, the minutes on remote meetings specifically should indicate each person's uh, vote, even if it's unanimous. So it's a small technicality, uh, but there are. Um, watchdogs out there that look for these things and it's the law and I, I don't have any problem with that. So we're trying to address some of these changes. So the minutes uh, had not been approved previously and just has made sure that uh, roll call was um, was given. So uh, I don't have, the, the minutes weren't changed um, and I took a look at them. I just don't have them here in front of me right now. Um, and they they seem fine for me. I mean, there wasn't anything of any uh, significance uh, indicated there. So if anyone is um, so inclined, I'll look for a motion to approve those minutes. Carrie, you're on mute. You're on mute, Carrie. There you go. I'll move it to approve. Okay. <laughs> second. Great. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of July 12, you say? Uh, of 2023, and what was the other date? Uh, we have July 12, 2023, 9, yep. 7, 2023, 10, right. 12, 2023, and 11, 1, 2023. Right. Okay, so four different dates. Um, uh, I'm going to take that as a collective motion um, for all four of those dates. Um, I'll take a roll call vote. Uh, Gary. Um, yes. Okay, Carrie. Aye. And Cindy, aye. All right, well, um, thank you. Uh, I know that we, we do have a fifth mem member. Unfortunately, Nancy was not able to join us tonight. We do have a fifth member, uh, Mr. Hardeby, uh, Greg Hardeby. I have heard from him. Uh, he's been uh, dealing with some personal issues. He wants to remain a member of the um, of the board um and i will take that into consideration he has we have not seen him for some time but um i will reach out to him soon and see i'm not sure what date his um his position is good until uh but i'll have a discussion with him when that comes up to see uh how he might be able because it's tough with five people it's difficult to make sure that we have a uh, quorum anytime we, we have these meetings. So I appreciate everyone's attendance here um, tonight. Um, and I won't keep you much longer. It's 747. We'll keep it under an hour, which is always good. 
Uh, are there any other uh, new business items or any other items relating to the personnel board that anyone wants to bring up? No. No? Okay. So, Carrie, mm -hmm. you can get back to us uh, if you hear from uh, Keith or if you have any other issues that you want to hash out. Uh, like I said, I would expect maybe in two or three weeks we will have, uh, I might call another brief meeting. I don't think it'll be even as long as this one. Uh, and we can bring this up again. Uh, and I'll give another update on the um, on the study, on the compensation study. Um, but other than that, I don't think we have any other business that's going to be pending uh, in front of us. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn then. Um, motion to adjourn. Second. All righty. Uh, all those in favor? Gary. Aye. Gary. Yes. Cindy, aye. Okay, thank you. We are out. Thank you. Have a great, great evening, everyone.